All right, guys, it's the end of the year, and you know what that means. These are my top 10 favorite games of 2015. And no, Unity is not one of them. Mortal Kombat! Holy crap, guys, this has to be my most favorite Mortal Kombat game. I have ever played. The graphics are phenomenal, runs at a sweet 60 frames per second, has the best character roster, has the coolest looking levels, and the fatalities, the fucking fatalities. How can you go wrong with those? I mean, seriously. It's Mortal Kombat. If you're a fighting game fan, pick this up, no question. Ah, Ubisoft, you fucking listen to us. They must have watched all the fan hate against Unity and said, wow, we really have to get in gear and fix the shit that we filled out last year. So I'm so thankful that Assassin's Creed Syndicate does not suck. It is leagues better than Unity. One of my most favorite Assassin's Creed games, to be honest. And it does have a few glitches here and there, but nothing that can be easily patched, of course. And I absolutely love the look of London. It's the best looking Assassin's Creed game I've ever played. And I really like being able to play as two characters, as Jacob and Evie, especially Evie. She's one of the most interesting female characters that I've seen in a video game in 2015. So props to Ubisoft for doing that. And I absolutely love the grappling hook. At first I was a little skeptical, but I really like how they implemented it. Being able to climb buildings a lot faster and being able to traverse streets and whatnot because streets in London are really, really wide open and using the stagecoaches to get around the city faster. Overall, a great game, and I can't wait to see what the next installment is as long as they don't fuck it up. Ubisoft, we're keeping our eye on you. What can I say? I'm a Halo fanboy and I do not care. <laughs> Halo 5 Guardians is everything I wanted to have in a Halo game. The only thing I wish it had was a little bit longer single player campaign. But other than that, it's a great multiplayer game. Really, that's what it's for is the multiplayer. Especially Warzone. Holy shit, Warzone is my favorite mode. I could play that for hours on end. I really hope that they come out with a lot more maps for it because right now there's only a handful of them. And the fact that they're also releasing Forge mode later on is going to be a really awesome feature. Can't wait to play around with that and make videos on that as well and stuff. But overall, a great multiplayer shooter. And they pretty much took everything that they did from Halo 4 and improved upon it and made it basically a super fun shooter Halo game, which is what it should be. So thank you, 343. Woohoo! So let's see, how do you take Dark Souls to basically make it better and more rewarding? Well, you get Bloodborne. And for those of you guys that don't know, I actually really suck at Dark Souls. I brought that up quite a few times. But this game, even though, yeah, I did die a lot quite a bit, it still is way more rewarding than Dark Souls. And also, I do think it's a little bit easier to pick up and play. It is challenging and brutal for sure, but the rewards are absolutely fucking awesome. And I cannot thank the developers enough for making those. And the game looks gorgeous, of course. The combat can be really suspenseful and thrilling. And you get some really awesome weapons and shit and all the customization and just the design of all the enemies and stuff. I mean, gotta give them props to how the game does look. But definitely, if you're a hardcore RPG fan, pick this up, absolutely. Six. Just Cause Trace. I mean, I had to put it on this list just cause. But crappy jokes aside, I, what can I say? I'm a sucker for being able to just go around whenever I feel like it and blowing shit up. I mean, this is everything that I wanted to be in a Just Cause game. It took everything from Just Cause 2 and improved upon it. I mean, this game is just as addicting, if not more than Just Cause 2, with improved graphics and one of the largest open world games I have ever seen in a game ever. So many vehicles, so many different, I guess you could say, geographic places to explore. I also really love how you can actually save some vehicles in garages now. It's also way easier to get vehicles delivered to you than ever before. And I mean, those explosions, those fucking explosions are, mwah, are beautiful, magnifical. <sighs> This was a really strong way to finish the trilogy. Some people didn't like this game because of the Batmobile. 
Personally though, it didn't really bother me. The only thing with the Batmobile that bothered me in the game was you had to fight some bosses and where you had to use the Batmobile. I feel like I was kind of being forced to use it, but other than that, I didn't really care. I liked the Batmobile and I love how there's all different types of Batmobiles that came out, like from the new Batman movies are going to be released, so so fucking fun to play with those, and also some of the classic Batmobiles. Those are really addicting to play in as well. And just the design of the game is really gorgeous. I mean, it's rock steady, so they definitely know what they're doing. And they improved the combat. The story I found was really interesting. I feel like this time around, shit really hit the fan. And they also did a really genius thing, which was bringing the Joker back, but not really. For those of you that haven't played the game, no spoilers, but for those of you that have, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So bringing Mark Hamill back to voice the Joker, I felt was a really genius idea in the way they did it. So congrats, fucking love this game. It's Batman, get it. <laughs> Ah, and just like with the reboot that I absolutely loved in 2013 comes Rise of the Tomb Raider. It took everything that I loved from the last Tomb Raider game and improved upon it with so much more customization options. There's way more of an RPG element so you can upgrade certain weapons you want to. There's a lot of outfits available as well, a lot more than before. And I mean, every suspenseful as before is the last game with Laura, you know, having to traverse all those crazy Basically everything collapses around her and she still survives it, but it's still really thrilling and really fun and being able to go around and trying to get all the collectibles which actually means something this time around so you actually have an incentive to go around the entire world and try to look for stuff which actually matters. There's way more tombs as well which of course obviously should be there because it's a Tomb Raider game, but super fun game just as good as the last if not better. Pick it up for sure. And these last three games, guys, they took me forever to try to figure out how to arrange them in order. I went arrows just trying to figure out, then this should go here, this should go here, this should go here, this should go here. But these three games, just so you know, super hard for me to pick. But as you all know, they're killing me one winner in the end. So here we go. For number three is Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Fucking Pain. Ah, uh, Hideo Kojima, you did it. This is a great way to end the Metal Gear Solid franchise. This is, in my opinion, going to be the last Metal Gear Solid game that it exists because a Metal Gear Solid game without Hideo Kojima just isn't a Metal Gear game, in my opinion. I don't care if Konami keeps making them. I'm not getting them because fuck Konami, they're a shitty company. But putting that aside, Hideo Kojima absolutely nailed it with this game. I don't know where to start between the Fear Me aspect that I felt was amazing and all the side ops you can do. The customization is bigger than ever with all your vehicles, your armor, your weapons, especially your army. You get your own base and customize it and build your own army and you feel like a badass general. The story I thought was the most interesting. Even if you haven't played past Metal Gear games, you're going to absolutely love this. Can't say enough about it. Get this game if you like RPG games, tactical shooters, regular third person shooters, whatever. Get this game if you're a gamer. It's amazing. Well, guys, time to fanboy out here a little bit, but I don't care. It is time for Fallout 4! Oh man, thank you Bethesda, this is everything I wanted to be in a Fallout game. They took everything from Fallout 3 and just improved upon it tenfold. The world is bigger than before, so much more customization between the power armor, different weapons in the world, different outfits in the world, just so much stuff and your customization, the way your guy looks is way more extensive than ever before. Just super fun, easy to pick up, and just hours upon hours of trying to quest form, and which isn't really a bad thing because if you're going through a main quest and you're like, hey, what's this over here? Well, hey, what's this over here? Hey, what's this over here? It's like an Easter egg kind of before you know it, you're like, what was I doing again? I can't remember. But I mean, the side quests, in my opinion, are the best part of the game, just going around and exploring. Super, super fun. If you're an RPG fan, pick it up. Shooter fan, pick it up. It's amazing. Get this one. Ah, this is why I love being a gamer. CD Projekt Red, you absolutely know what we gamers love with the Witcher fucking 3. Wow, I don't even know where to start. I mean, this is a near perfect game. I, in my review for it, I could not, 
I took so much time just trying to find anything wrong with the game. It literally is almost flawless between its story where it had me literally in tears many times throughout the story, which is really hard for a game store to do. Some major props to the story writers for doing that. The game looks absolutely gorgeous, and the fact that they had half the budget Rockstar had with making GTA V is phenomenal, and of course with half the team behind it as well, so huge props to that. And I mean, the combat is way improved, it's way better than it ever was before, it's super easy to pick up. RPG elements are way better with being able to equip all different types of weapons and potions, and casting signs is better than it has ever been before. The world is gorgeous, and I just love being able to go around different, doing different side quests and stuff. Kind of like Bethesda's games, but with this one, I just felt like, I don't know, it's a different take on it because you're more in this different type of world, and it, it's, it's a, <laughs> I don't know what else to say, it's an amazing game, guys. If you're an RPG fan, if you're a hack and slash fan, if you love good stories, if you love good graphics, if you like to play good games, period. Get this fucking game. Can't say that enough. And nothing else to say other than get it. It's that damn good. Well, that does it, guys. Those are my top 10 favorite games of 2015. So, what are your most favorite games of 2015? Feel free to let me know in the comments. If you agree with my list, cool. If you disagree with my list, cool. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Can't wait for what 2016 has in store. There's already been so many amazing games announced, and I can't wait to play those. Stay tuned to my channel for gameplay videos on those. As always, guys, be sure to subscribe. Oh, shit.